What's the best advice you were ever given about how to navigate Hollywood, navigate television, and anyone can start? Whoever feels inspired. Melissa smiling. <laughs> I'm gonna ask Julianne. Oh, I'm smiling in anticipation of everyone else's answer. <laughs> <laughs> the best advice? Best yeah. advice you, you were ever given about your career specifically. Um, wow. Um, the best advice I think I was ever given actually was by Warren Beatty, who happened, I, I was shooting an episode of the Larry Sanders show, and he, they're good friends, and he happened to be there, and he said, it was sort of the beginning of my ER days, and he said, don't do too many publicity things. It makes people know you too well. Mm. And here we all are. And here we are. <laughs> no, but he, you know, Good because advice. on television you play a character every week you're in someone's mm. house. And if you start then doing a lot of press in other and showing who you are, it gets very convoluted and the acting versus the personal life gets too close together. When you do movies, it's different because you're not in everyone's house mm, once so a week. True. And on television, we're these little people that people think they know and can hold. And, and on movies, you're untouchable, you know, because they're, it's larger than life. So I think it was really good advice because it, you know, it helped me sort of navigate how I wanted, do I want to be an actor or do I want to be famous? You know, it was a good. Do you think that helped you reinvent yourself after ER because you were on such an iconic show for so long and maybe people weren't as familiar with you, which led It you? definitely helped me decide to go off and pursue a life that I wanted, not a life that other people wanted for me. How about others? I uh, went in between my freshman first semester and second semester and the little bit of time I did at college at SUNY Purchase, I had an opportunity to go down and created a role in a Tennessee Williams play. And I asked Tennessee, who came to some of the rehearsals, not all of them, and uh, oh, he was looking for somebody's script to do a line change in. I said, oh, here you go. <laughs> <laughs> and then as we were parting ways after the production had ended, um, I asked him to sign it for me. I've never really asked for anybody's signature. I don't quite understand it. God's sakes, it was Tennessee Williams. <laughs> <laughs> and when you asked, I, maybe that is what made me smile. I didn't even know I'd thought of it, but then there it was. Um, he wrote to me, Melissa, a great future is assured, I swear. Yes. <laughs> oh. yes. And I puzzled over it over the years, and I thought, well, this perhaps is this great future that he spoke of. <laughs> Maybe I'll get a job next week. <laughs> <laughs> and along the way, well, there you go. There you go. Thank you, Tennessee. Wow. How about you, Regina? Oh, my gosh. Oh, best advice. That's a hard one, because, I mean, I've, I've been getting advice always <laughs> along the way. <laughs> Um, Maybe the worst. Yeah, the What's worst. the worst advice? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really gotten any bad advice. I think I kind of let it go in one ear and out the other if I've had. But um, I guess Marla Gibbs, when I was uh, um, starting on 227, um, just telling me that even if I'm off camera, my job is just as important as when I'm on. Because the more I give that person, the better both of our performance would be. So that probably, that's the first one that came to mind. Mm -hmm. Well, that's also good for a teenager too. When yeah, you know, yeah, you but at, at the time I was kind of like, okay, the camera's not on me, why would it matter? <laughs> <laughs> you know, because as a teenager, it's all about you. Right. But, but I, I, I got it and it's 100% right. And when I am working to this day and I see actors that are, huge that don't do off camera mm -hmm. and then and it just frustrates me and then I have wonderful opportunities like working with Tom Cruise where he literally waited his day was done and over and he's like what you need to let me go run and take off my makeup and he came back and did off camera for me so to know that other actors even though they're huge still you know go by that same idea of making the project better because we all do it together. I mean, it's not just one of us. How about you, Katie? Uh, I was just kind of reflecting on um, uh, the first uh, job I had on a, on a television series was a sitcom with Mary Tyler Moore. And uh, up until that point, I'd just been a singer. 
my, my goal in life was I was a musician. And somehow I, I, I ended up on a sitcom. I, I, I still, to this day, was not quite sure. Now I feel like, I, yes, I kind of know what I'm doing. But at the time she said to me, I was so overwhelmed by the process, and she said to me, it's one page at a time, one page at a time, one, one beat at a time. And she did this to me, because this is how I was to the camera. I was doing like this. <laughs> she would come over to me, and she'd go like this, be in the light. Yeah. <laughs> And it, to me, I mean, it was such, because I sort of learned on the job. I didn't go to school to be an actor, and I learned as I, I learned on the job. And um, so everything people have said to me has been sort of some form of advice, because I, I was sort of, um, I was bluffing for so many years is what it felt like, like I, acting as if I knew what I was doing. And um, so I, uh, I, I listened very uh, intently to to people that I was working with. I, I pick it up all the time. I still do. I think I remain, I think to remain teachable through this entire process is why we, why we continue to be interesting and interested in all this. So I think I'm getting it all the time. And what you've vacillated between comedy and drama sort of almost equally at this point. And I was curious for you process wise, what, what is more, which one is more difficult for you? Um, I don't use the word difficult a lot. I think that um, whatever I'm in, it's just a different muscle. You know, both mediums are, it's just a different, it's a, just a different process. I mean, from um, doing multi-camera work to doing single camera work is really different too. So um, uh, I find them both, um, you know, it's all about the writing for me. And if something is written well, and I can um, put myself in that imaginary situation, then, um, I don't find either one difficult. It's a, it, bad writing is what's difficult. <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing there worse. You go. <laughs> My husband is a writer. He's My an excellent course. writer. But, uh, you know, bad, I can always tell when I read a script, if I can't remember the lines, yes. Yes. something's wrong. Yes. Always. Something That's is right. wrong. How do you guys handle that? I mean, Christina, how do you, I'm sure not... But she didn't have that on that. How do you handle that bad writing? <laughs> I'm lucky. I'm yeah. lucky. Uh, first of all, we don't you know, deviate from that script one, right. one little <laughs> letter, right. um, and, it, and it's written beautifully. Uh, there, every once in a while there'll be something, and you also know when, you, when it comes out of your mouth, and you're, you're like, no one talks like that, it just doesn't flow, we'll go back to the writer and say, D did you say this out loud? Because mm -hmm. it's really strange, and, and, um, and they'll, f every once in a while fix it, or they'll be like, no, you just have to figure that out. <laughs> um, but I'm very, very lucky. So, and you also have the, the sort of different time period people did actually speak differently back then, or maybe there was a different vernacular that maybe doesn't feel as comfortable for you that Joan think, would say, actually. Yeah, I think in the very, very beginning, I was getting used to, you know, not saying can't and saying cannot and just adjusting a little bit in that way. Now, now that we're going into season five, it comes quite naturally. But um, there was a little adjustment or uh, just even... Um, like, why did I say that like that? Oh, because I watched Friends 500 times. That's why I just said, did that. Because it was like, it was too, like just saying something a little too modern, even just the way that, you know. Um, but that's also been really, really fun to, to remind yourself. Every once in a while, you catch yourself and you're like, oh, here it is five years later, and I just caught myself doing it. It's kind mm -hmm. of fun. And Kelly, you've you are Scottish, and you're doing an Irish accent mm -hmm. in 1920s I know. in America. <laughs> yeah. how, how is that all? Well, I was just saying, I really, like, I keep joking to Terry, um, the uh, that created our show and the head writer, that, that all Margaret's lines are, are written for Yoda. <laughs> <laughs> Entirely, like, what? Like, everything she very says wise. is sort of higgledy faculty and back to front, and I just had to keep sort of thinking, well, you know, it's of its time, and, but nobody else has to talk like Yoda. <laughs> I point it out to other actors all the time when I'm on set, and like, look, miserable he is. Like, who is this? <laughs> you know, it's very old. And what's been the hardest, this is the first time you've done series television in America, what is, what's been the hardest? Or anywhere, I haven't really, I've done... Um, TV movies. Yeah, I did sort of one-offs. Uh, for TV, for the BBC, a couple of things, and then uh, th so this is my first. I didn't know what I was getting into, frankly. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's all it's all a learning curve. And I was thinking about the advice thing, and I, nobody like, I'm not from a town where people do this for a living, <laughs> and uh, I, there's no advice really that that 
I, I can think of. I mean, I well, give her some advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. Really. the best advice I've gotten is just right now. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I You're was going to say, I, um, if I think about it, some of my best advice that I got was from my high school acting teacher, mm. <laughs> Mr. Ackley. I have to give him a shout out. Mm. And he said, it, he told we were not allowed to be late for rehearsal. If we were late three times, we were out of the play. And take care of your own props. Two of the best yeah. pieces of advice I've ever gotten. Yeah. <laughs> and it stayed. I mean, seriously, it stayed with me. And and. I mean, I'll be really late for social events, but I will almost never be late for work. And it's, I mean, it's that, you know, he kind of put the fear of God in me about that, but I, you know, I think it's a good one. Props are a mystery props. to still. I need to go by skill for props. Well, you have a lot of props. You have lots of props. <laughs> oh. And props where it's like, don't lose that, there's only one of them. Yeah. <laughs> lose ours is a pen. No pressure. <laughs> In terms of um, learning lines, I'm always curious to see, first of all, how many pages you're getting in advance. When are you actually doing the core learning of your lines? Is it the day of? Is it the night before? How about you, Connie? Um, it really depends on what I'm working on. You're in a new pilot right now, so you're sort of yeah. you know, kind of getting back into shooting. Um, and and what we were everybody was saying about good writing, it's so true because people are always like, how do you learn all those lines? And it's like, well, if the writing is good, it's very, it's actually very easy, because it becomes very, it feels very organic when you're learning it. And um, you know, on Friday Night Lights, um, even though some of that ended up being improvised, we actually did spend a lot of time on our lines and. Um, Kyle Chandler and I, we used to say all the time, you got to know your lines backwards and forwards and then you can go and run with it and do whatever you want and let it come to life. But the, the foundation is knowing, knowing every bit of that. And so, um, but I, I also at the same time, you know, so again, like we're in the world of advice, some, somebody down the line told me um, to write everything out without punctuation and just sort of write it all out, just words, 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 and kind of learn it that way so that it's not too regimented. And again, it depends on what you're doing. Not so useful for Shakespeare, but you know, it's, it, there, there, it does allow a certain freedom. It's like if you can learn what that is and then just kind of let it come to life, I, I find that to be very useful. And how, do, how comfortable were you, are you improvising? Is that, because a lot of people don't actually like that, they prefer the sort of the structure of the script. Yeah, I, I love it, you know, and um, I, 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 when I think about it, I realize I've worked that way a lot. You know, particularly when when I'm when I've been working with the same writer and director because the writer's right there and he's also directing. So it almost it feels so collaborative because you're kind of you feel like everybody you're creating it together at, in that moment. Um, and so I really love that about about improvising. Um, but it's true, and you know, on our show people would come on, you know, get, guest actors would come on and feel really uncomfortable about that. And it's almost like we wanted to say, just go with it, just have a good time, just run free, you know, and, and uh, but it's, it, it, you know, it's, for some people that really goes against their rules, you know, and, and so again, I think with every project it's different. How about you, Juliana? Um, um, it, it depends on the situation. In the show I'm in now, because it's a legal show, mm -hmm. It, um, all I do is learn lines. Mm -hmm. If I have half, an, but the problem is for me because I'm in every day, 14 hours a day. I have to get the lines out of my head to get the new lines in my head. So the challenge is always when to learn the lines because if I'm in the middle of a huge court case and I have legal dialogue that I don't really understand, um, <laughs> I can't learn tomorrow's court case because I have to get this one out to have room. And, I, and so that's yeah. always the challenge for me, is figuring out, I have to know my lines inside and out. I, I can't show up on a set without knowing them inside and out, because it, it's a handicap otherwise for me. Mm -hmm. I, if I know my lines, I'm so free to do whatever. And mm -hmm. surprises happen when I know my lines. When I don't know my lines, it's all about knowing my lines, and then mm -hmm. I'm a wreck. And I feel terrible for the actors on my show, because I have had to set the bar so high because I'm in every day and because I have a toddler, so my sleep deprivation is so severe that when actors come in unprepared, I literally look at them, I, I, <laughs> there's just no room for error in my life. So I just always think, my God, the first thing you should know is your lines and worry about your trailer later. Like, are you kidding me? I can't, I have no, and it's in a certain way has made it incredible for all of us because 
the actors that work every day are incredibly respectful of that because I'm just so tired all the time. <laughs> but then there's times when you have to do reshoots because actors didn't know their lines and those are the moments wow. where I say, you know what, here's the deal. <laughs> I, it's so unprofessional and, and I think it just doesn't service the work. Mm -hmm. and, I, and so I'm always, I haven't read a, I don't read a book for 10 months out of the year. I just I am always learning yeah. lines. That's all I do. I put less pressure on myself this year because I'm new to television and kind of going from last season to this season, it's it's a bit of a relief, a relief for me because I was used to film work before and I put everything into the few scenes that I might have yeah. in a movie and I'd be like, you know, do a lot of work for it. And then because I don't know what has, what's happening really ever and and things change and I've okay. had to I've had to loosen up a little bit. But lines are really really important. You definitely like I feel like. But I don't give myself as long. I've learned that my brain actually can. I don't need three weeks to learn. Right. <laughs> like, I, don't I don't have three weeks. I don't have three weeks. It is a muscle. Like uh, I, you always notice the actors that have had a few days off come back, and you you can always see how hard it is to get back into it because they atro it does it atrophies and. Mm -hmm. And and it's a constant and it's exhausting. Like my head starts. It depends on what exploding. that dialogue is too. I yeah, mean, the stuff that you're explaining of the legal, of that, the legal yeah. jargon, or that play a doctor, or, yeah. and you have to hold all those things. If you're having a conversation with your daughter, or with this, those. Yeah, things. the family you, stuff is always the stuff that's easy to learn. You can, and and I find exactly what you're saying is very true in those cases where it's almost better to not know it too well. Right. Yeah. You sit home for days with five right. sentences exchanged between two people, and you think of too many great ideas mm -hmm. and talk about it. That's yeah. the beauty of and television though, I think, is you so have quick. no luxurious exactly. time to... So you just buy the seat of your pants yeah. or whatever you can. And there's yeah. a real beauty to that. I mean, I think that just gives a real spontaneity to the performance, yeah. you know, in, in, in a way that... And I think that in combination with the longer run of a TV show, it's like you can have that spontaneity and also really get to know that character and really let that character have an evolution. Yeah, that's what I love about being yeah. on cable too, because cable you have even a quicker, shorter schedule. <laughs> but everybody's like, you still have to do the same amount of film, but you have a shorter time to do it. So there's not a lot of, you know, it's much more spontaneous, but everybody needs to know their lines yeah. because it just slows it so, up too much. No, and also it's, it's, fun. Crew it's too. fun. Oh, and then the yeah. person that doesn't know their lines comes in and they're the biggest pain in the ass on the set. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but that's because they're embarrassed with their exactly. lines. <laughs> One thing you mentioned a little bit, Juliana, is the, uh, the sort of balance between personal and professional lives. Mm -hmm. How much is that something that you guys struggle with on a daily basis, and how much does it influence your decision even to take on a series, knowing what that entails? Well, I have three children, and, um, <clears throat> and I've had my two older children are 16 and 15, and I had them while I was on a series, and they were so very accommodating. They could come, they were there on the set, it was all the time. But that was in the multi-camera world. And um, now I have my, I have a littler one, I have a four-year-old as well. And um, you know, I don't like to leave town. That's one of the reasons that um, I've been so grateful to work in television. Because I think, speaking of advice, I think at some point somebody said to me, your life is, is, it, is your life. It's not your, your work is not your life. Mm -hmm. And it made me a better person, it made me a better actor, it made me a better art, artist to have children. I mean, that's just my bend. My family just opened my heart. So um, my choices are always based on them first. You know, it's like really still very hard for me to get to the set at six in the morning. It just mm. is, you know. And the, and the scheduling of the nanny or the housekeeper or somebody to drive them to the bus to drive, you know, it's really, it's, it's a, a challenge. Double. It is a challenge, boy. It is really it harder is. or less hard knowing that you work with your husband? Oh, that has nothing to do with it at all. <laughs> because we have, you know, he's the he's the creator of the show, so he has a whole different schedule than I do, and um, you know, his job is way harder than my job. You know, he's just he's just at work all the time. But just to always taking them into consideration, and you know, you've I've missed things that I wish I hadn't had to miss in the lives of my children. But my children really know that they have a mom who who's fulfilled and loves what she does. And that's been a great role model for them. You know, for all those things that I've had to miss, those little choir events or, you know, whatever I've had to miss, I've had to ba I've balanced it in my brain thinking, well, you know, my kids are really pursuing their passion because they've had parents that have done it as well. So 
that's kind of how I justify it. But it's a juggle, boy. It really is, you it's know. Juggle. No, no, you it's need a, a wife, juggle. really. That's yeah. why I, I, I need a wife. <laughs> Well, that was, wasn't, I think, Juliana, you have said that one of the reasons why you wanted to do Good Wife was that it was in New York, or that they did it in New York for you, you or something like yeah, that. Yeah, I had never, I mean, I, I, I got married and had a baby, and, and, and I thought, well, I should probably work. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I'm married to someone not in the business, and he can't just get up and go. And I was schlepped all over the world as a kid, and it was very unstable for me. So I wanted to make sure that my kid had a stable home, no matter um, how often I was gone from it, that I still was come home every night. So I said, I'd, the good I mean, when the good wife came, I was scared to do it because it wasn't cable, because I had done network before, and it's a no. really hard grind to do an hour on network, and I was worried about it getting watered down and all of that stuff. But I, I loved the script so much and the writers, and um, I felt like it had good movie producers behind it that would keep it on track. And I said yes, and then they said, we're going to shoot it in Vancouver. And I was like... <laughs> Oh no, I can't go there. Not because I don't like Vancouver, but because m my life is in New York. And I said, I can't do it unless it's in New York. And they moved it to New York. Wow. Mm -hmm. And that was a huge blessing because I love, I love working there. And I, being, the last time I was on a TV show was in LA and I'm not from here. So I felt like I was living this life for an actor, not for me, in a place I didn't belong. So now I'm home working, and it's just. Nice. Haven't we see you guys sometimes across the river? Oh, do you? <laughs> I think that's. <laughs> but it is. There's something lovely about being able to stay home and do your craft because so much of our business is being doing our craft elsewhere. So you can't make a life Good of it. Good for insisting on that. I mean, it's. Well, they're not like shooting Treme anywhere else. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> and my son will be 24 in June. Right. So, so yeah. um, the, the need for me to be in a locale yeah. for him is no longer. This is a dilemma that faces female actors far time. more strongly yeah. than male actors. Yeah. That's just the way it is with the nurturers and there's plenty of fine papas out there and all the rest of it. But something happens inside of us right. that is undeniable. And this, yeah. you know, for me and I, maybe for all of you, that the birth of the child being this first thing that ever was priority. like, whoa, that's something yeah. more important all of a sudden. <laughs> Which yeah. is great. And you find a way to work it out. I mean, Katie I bet each one of us in a different way. Before we started, yeah. the, the choices that you made. Like, yeah. I specifically chose to do TV so that I that's right. I was turning down movies yep. because they, a month here or a month there and I can't do that. I mean, there are some uh, actors that do, actresses that do, but... But I think they pay their, a price for it. No, they definitely do. And I mean, I've talked to them personally. And you can't, you can't take your kid out of school. You can't. You can't. What are you going to do? No. no so. Well, I know some of them, they homeschool, right. you know, but even then, with the homeschooling and taking them from this place that they know to homeschool well, there. they're living your life. It's they're still, not living their yeah. life. I'm always so amazed at how many people say to me, well, do you bring him to the set all the time? I'm like, he hates coming to the set. Totally <laughs> he comes, sees me, and then I tell him to be quiet and sit in a chair, you know, because mom is working. He has a life. He has right, friends. He has right. school. He has, you know. He's, I don't want him to live my life. I want him to live his life. I like to live their life. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> he has a good life. I like my life, but I like, I like, I like being a mom. But it's, it's a great. good choice. Like I, someone was saying, well, aren't you exhausted or any time? I was like, I love, it. I love them both. I don't not want to have my kid and I don't want, not, not want to have my job. Nice. So you make it work and you sleep when you're dead and you figure it out, you know? <laughs> Coffee's I find like I'm always figuring it out. Though. Always, always, always. Figure, because I'm a control freak. Yeah, yeah. So I've never had a nanny. So oh I knew God. that oh after I had my son, that <laughs> wow. I, when he was about five, I'm not gonna have any more kids. Yeah. That, that, that this this works this for works me. For I'm me. not gonna because I'm, I'm too controlling. I don't want someone to spend that much time in my house. I don't want <laughs> other than my housekeeper. They you know she comes when I'm not there and you know I'm, I'm like that. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I find myself always balancing. Yeah. You know, I have like three families at his school that I'm close to. Can make it? Can you pick them up? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, and I pick them up on my way home, and we work with the same crew. They move so fast. Yeah. You know, so I'm lucky. I'm still getting off of work at six. You know, that's like really. Uh, Wow. wow, that's amazing. Yeah. We barely yeah. see yeah. it. It's traffic time. We're having lunch but, at six. They're yeah. like, lunch. I'm like, but it's nine at night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was curious, uh, 
Christina, I'll start with you. What's the most difficult thing about watching your performance, either when it's actually airing or, I don't know if you see dailies or if you're seeing cuts of the show before it airs? Uh, I don't see dailies and, and I just watch it when it's on. Um, I, I, I find that I actually learn a lot from watching. Uh, I'm, I'm critical, of course, you know. Um, and, I'll, and I'll be like, oh, that outfit, or oh, God, or like, what do I, you know? Um, but that goes away real fast, and then, and then I, uh, I find it actually quite helpful, and I feel like I learn, like, sometimes I'll think I'm projecting something, or that, some, that I've done something, and it comes across very differently, and I'm surprised by it, and I think I learn from that. Um, uh, so I, I, I think it's a learning tool for me. How about you, Kelly? I, I'm really bad. I don't watch anything, and I watched the pilot of our show because they made me. I had to go. <laughs> <laughs> I would have had earplugs and a blindfold, but <laughs> I, so you haven't watched the whole series? No. no. It's really good, by the way. Yeah, I hear. Yeah. I hear. <laughs> tell. But um, yeah, I find I, I, I think I probably would find it useful. I just am not brave enough or something. I'm scared I won't turn up for work again if I have to <laughs> watch myself and I kind of think if, if, if there's like if there's big problems on set and I really wasn't getting something then then there's been nothing that's made me think I should watch and, and learn from it I'll just I'll j I just like to keep my head down and just do it and, <laughs> and yeah it's sure like it's someone else's it. job to tell me what to do so I think you'd be pleasantly surprised <laughs> <laughs> you're really wonderful oh, thank you very much <laughs> how about you Connie um, well, yeah, I, I sort of agree with Christina. It, it, it does feel that I can learn a lot from it, but then I also do, as you do, for especially the, our final season of Friday Night Lights, I could not bring myself to watch it. It just felt like, you know, I think that it, I think it's hard for me to be objective, and also at the same time, you know, there, there was so much sort of emotion wrapped up into it. So it's, it's sometimes... Uh, I find it hard. It's like pulling teeth to get there and to go and to watch it and then to try to be objective. And then, of course, there is the whole thing of like, oh, that outfit, or oh, they, <laughs> oh, they cut this. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, and on Friday Night Lights, we'd shoot so much material, and that it was bound. Things were bound to get cut, and and. Uh, but I, so I, I found it useful to watch only to see what the story was that we were telling because you know things would get sort of cut down. But then also, do y'all have that thing where um, people stop you on the street and they say, "Oh, you're so much younger than you look on TV," yeah. or "You're what so do you look like on TV? Yeah, yeah. You look so or much you so, better." In yeah, real you look life. so much right. better in real life. And it's like I had it last night. I was crossing the street from um, going to my hotel here, and this guy was on his bike, he's staring at me across the street, and I was like, oh no, he's bought, he's made me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and I finally crossed the street, he goes, oh man, you look so much like Juliana Margulies, but you're way younger. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, my always. And he goes, younger, and thinner. Younger, <laughs> younger, thinner, and prettier. You're so much prettier. Yeah. Oh yeah. Thinner, thinner and prettier. Yeah. 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 And, and, and I started to go, thank you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because I kind want to make them aware that they've said something slightly right, foolish. Right. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you want to be nice because you don't want them to walk away and go, that girl from Madame Holland is an asshole. <laughs> like, you know, so you want to be nice, but you kind of want to go, do you always behave in this manner? And you should adjust. I once said to someone, I don't know what to do with that information. <laughs> well, it's interesting because they seem to have such a disconnect about the fact that you are actually also the person that they're talking about watching on television. Right, right, right. It's just completely yeah. disconnected in their mind. Well, that's what you were saying about being in people's living rooms. That's it, because it's changed yeah, right. entirely right. for me, just because it's so, like I said, it just is so new for me. And it and it changed immediately. And it's like, wow, when you're in people's living rooms, they, they don't, they can watch they're you in their really house coat. Yeah. They don't have to get dressed. Yeah. 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 You're intimate with them. Hopefully, yeah. hopefully a house coat. Yeah. 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 But it's true because I've walked willing. down the street with movie stars <laughs> and they don't go near the movie star. Right. There's an accessibility. But they feel there's that they an can tell me yes. about what I'm wearing. Right. Right. But they don't, they, they, I don't think the people yeah. actually feel like they're being negative. They, they don't. No. Think no. They, 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 it's right. not coming right. from a mean place, even yeah. though it's it's very off-putting, you know. I I have an audience that knows me only from movies, and then you know, newer audience with Southland, and I'll give the people who are not familiar with Southland, they'll say, "Oh, hey, so you're not working on anything?" <laughs> <laughs> like, cause I'm in the grocery store, I'm not working on anything. <laughs> When I'm down in, in uh, New Orleans, I mostly pass through the world 
quite simply not being noticed. I don't wear makeup in my own life. I just flew up from New Orleans today and nary a word said to me to and fro the airport. Even after winning the Oscar? People even not. There's wow. a, I mean there's a little more heightened awareness and and, and a thing, but by and large, for the amount of time I've spent in people's livings, living rooms and on the big screen for 25 some years, it's a remarkable small amount of people that, that, that come up and say anything at all. But on Treme, there are technical advisors, um, and for my character, a woman who's an attorney in town, Mary Howell, she's an astonishing woman who's helped musicians and other disenfranchised people um, in all kinds of situations and after Katrina. Well, watch Tremaine, you'll see. But Mary Howe lives in New Orleans, and people will come up to her after the show has aired and go, oh, Mary, you were so great on the show last night. Wow. Wow. People get confused. <laughs> wow. See, I love that. I think that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. I, I have such problem or uh, uncomfortability with celebrity, with mm -hmm. the whole being recognized and being in people's living room thing. I think it's, it's very, it's not my favorite part of our job. You know, I like to go to work and have them put clothes on me and be somebody else. <laughs> yeah. I don't, when I have to come somewhere and be myself, I find it so, like, still, after all these years, like, really? I'm, it's awkward and I'm not quite sure. And I love that you can go through the, I, I, I'm that way too. Yeah. I've played characters that really don't look like me. My and, husband um, laughs at I'm, me because I, I still think that if someone comes up to me that we must have gone to school together. Yeah, like how like do they know me? Go, You're Christina, right? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, are you from Idaho? Like, how do you like? I still think, and my husband's like, <laughs> right. I still like don't get it. You know? My I kids do we that must like know each other. Day. Right. Yeah. Do you think that's something that all actors struggle with, or do you think some people just no, really so are more comfortable? Absolutely. <laughs> I've worked so with too. people that I love think so it. Too, yeah. And I'm like, wow, well, you know, no, there's a whole different. I mean, some, sometimes I wish I was a little more self promoting in those ways. I, I don't know. I, I think it might help, or I don't know, whatever. It's not who I am. But yes, yeah, so I think some people love it. I think some people are driven by it, actually. Yes, I think that right. there, are, there are actors who are actually, th that is what drives them. And even ultimately, maybe not initially, but ultimately makes them a good actor by the sheer desire to be a celebrity, celebrity right. you know, which, which is also very different for me too. But, but I, I do think that there is that kind of, I mean, even, you know, coming up in New York and, you know, pounding the pavement days, like you, I could recognize people like that, mm. you know, in my acting classes or whatever. And it's like, wow, they, they're really not very talented, <laughs> but they're going to go far. But there are some people yeah, that would be even better actors if they weren't so caught up in the celebrity. I mean, I have a friend that she's an awesome actress, but she, it is all about mm -hmm. the hair, the makeup, mm -hmm. and done, and, you know, we'll go to eat. And I'm like, we're going to a pizza kitchen. Like, <laughs> I've also, I've also seen with actors that tend to be more of, of that kind than what it seems we have here in the room, people who are doing the work because the work, what floats our boat. We have a job. <laughs> right? And that the first, you know, for somebody young that is thinking about going into acting, that notion of fame and celebrity is more often than not the thing that they think they're going for. And then every once in a while you run into people probably like these women here that sort of knew somewhere that that thing of pretending to be other people was comfortable and mm -hmm. interesting and fun and, and went looking to be employed as that. Which brings me to the piece of advice that I did get in school. It, oh, you want to be an actor. If anything can stop you, let it. <laughs> right. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. I would have to say when, when someone asks me for advice, because oftentimes like I'll have a mother be like, my daughter wants to be an actress, is there anything? And I don't have much to give, but I, the one thing I do say is just make sure she really loves acting. Mm -hmm. right. Just make sure she really loves that. <laughs> because that's, that's, so what you will, that's when, you're, when you're depressed and it's pilot season or whatever, that's what will make you keep going, going back and right. keep going. You know? I always say learn your craft, because I think it drives, it drives me crazy to see what, what's going on where people just think that acting is, it's like me suddenly being able to dance or sing. I mean, there's training involved and there's uh -huh. technique it's and there's, disrespect. there's such a disrespect. And I feel like there's a real class differentiation between people who have studied their craft and really love doing what they do because they love acting. And then people who act for other reasons. And, and it comes, you know, it comes full circle in the end, but I think 
you know, whenever someone mother say, you know, my kid, I want my kid to be an actor, I always say, no, not the kid. You know, let them be a kid, and then at 18, mm-hmm. let them decide what they want to do. But I always say, teach them their craft. Let them study, or take them yeah. to great plays, or go for to them, the for them to understand it's an yeah. art form. Because yeah. I think so. That's what why I feel disrespected so much when it comes to our art form that people aren't looking at it that way. I've had friends say, um, you know, I, I can do what you do. Bitch, no, you can't do what I do. And then, That's why you're doing a good job. It, it spills over onto the set. And yeah. you'll get one of those really busy days. And I love my crew and I love my set people. But you know, when they've had a hell of a day and your scene's been pushed for four hours later and you finally get in there and you're finally working and it's like, the cameras are all pointed at you and the lights are all pointed at you, but who are you and why are you in the way? Because we're working here. And that, that can be a funny disrespect that ends up happening. happening. Of, of what that, and, or then they can go the other way with it, where they're, oh, don't talk to her, don't look at her, don't it's, it's an but with, you know, it's an emotional scene today. <laughs> with what like we walk onto the set, it's like, oh. <laughs> on set, I hate that if there's a, an emotional scene sort of on the page and kind of, like there was a scene where it's like, I'm one tear. <laughs> And you're like, well, right. that's gonna be interesting. And then, and then suddenly, everyone in the crew, everybody's really quiet, and you're like, waiting no, for the tear. No, no. Let's just see. Let's just see what happens, yeah. and not like. I've had scenes like that before where it says, where the, where the other character says, why are you crying? And I will almost without question always start the scene by saying, you might have to cut that line. I'm just yeah. telling you right now, we'll see how it goes. But that's the, that's I right. think we're so lucky uh, as actors who are on TV shows because we get an intimate relationship with 150 people that are our crew members pretty much daily. When you do a movie, you come in and out and you get introduced to so many people and you don't know their names and then in two months it's over and you never see them again. Whereas with us, we actually have this family and it allows you, I never understand people who aren't respectful to the crew (laughs) because I'm gonna do my most vulnerable work in front of these people. These people, if they're not supporting me, I won't be able to do my best work. And I think it's so lucky on television that we get this family. Like, we've had a few, we just wrapped and two crew members told me they were leaving, I was sopping. Like, oh my God, you know. Breaking up the family. It is, it's your family, and you don't get that anywhere else, you know, so it is. Well, and on Friday Night Lights, it was so, our crew was with us the whole time, and you know, we were all in Austin, so it felt very, it felt like localized family, you know, and um, there was a sense that every single one of those people was integral to what we were creating, you know, so it wasn't just about them supporting us, it was that every single one of those camera people was telling a story because they were finding it, and every single, you know, and everyone had a sense of ownership, you know, and I think that's the beauty of, of television as well, is that as over time, people really have this collaborative sense of we're creating this thing together mm-hmm. and you know it, it, everyone becomes absolutely essential mm-hmm. and i think and it's rare i think it's, it's rare, rare that you have that situation mm-hmm. i've been on sets i've been on, i've been guest starring in arcs and blah 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 mm-hmm. where you don't have that feeling mm-hmm. from the crew and you think well <laughs> maybe it's just because i'm visiting but i think that when you have people that invest in the material and in you. I mean, I think it's so, we should be so it's grateful. It matters so much for so the material, so right? Because they're crew members what, read the script. What that is, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Most, I mean, most crew members don't read scripts. Ours are like, what's the Ours next episode? Well, yeah, they love it. I think, I think yeah. it's from the top down. It, it trickles down from oh, the writers. Yeah. And, and I think, um, you know, well, the producers and, every, and, and everybody, it comes from them. And if you've got good people at the top, then it just sort of, it lets everyone else shine yeah and I think yeah. what we do too sets the tone mm-hmm. you know I've been on sets where I'm not the the lead actress and I've seen you know bad behavior yeah. mm-hmm. which sort of trickles down to everyone yeah. I think that if you you have a responsibility if you are sort of in front a lot to set the tone you set and, the tone know, that means enthusiasm show up in your lines. that's right that's another time Advice. Oh, that's right. I will names. never not know my lines again. Names. Names. That's that's. I and you know people's names. Yeah. Yes, Knowing absolutely. your crew members' names. Yeah. Right. I mean, that's that's if you're oh, working yeah. with these people every single day, months out of the year. Grips. You know, also, grips. We, yeah, we work with different. I don't know how it works with you guys, but we have like a different director for every right. episode. Right. 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 And the, the directors that come back are always the directors that spend the time to know the hair and makeup artist's right. names, mm-hmm. the prop guy's names. You know, they're the people that become part of the family. And the ones that just come in and think they can just rule the roost, 
They're not back. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Down on Treme, we have yeah. a few people from the years, I worked five years on homicide in Baltimore, and we've got a handful, our sound guy, our dolly grip, our people. I, so basically, I've known these people 20 years. Mm -hmm. right. so it's great. extraordinary yeah. to be working with them again. And I think it makes all the difference in the work, at least for me, in the work that I'm able to do. Yeah, like When absolutely. I have that sense of, security. it's that sense of security and cohesion, and it's so, it's so empowering, and it's empowering to everybody, yeah. you know. And I had to do this big scene in season two where I was raped, and um, I had never done that before in a in a film or television situation. And uh, the love and support and silence and and respect I got from the crew, I mean, for me it was the first time I'd ever done. It, it was unbelievably vulnerable, mm. the whole thing, and. Um, I felt so loved and supported and not afraid. I mean, mm -hmm. it was really, you know, until I got there, I was sort of, you know, yeah. but we marked it and we walked, you know, it was like a dance. It was yeah. really like dance. Yeah, I mean, it's, it makes the show mm -hmm. better. Yeah. You have a great really. crew like that, it makes the show better. Mm -hmm. One sure. thing you guys mentioned a little bit about this sort of notion of disrespect, when, you know, when John was on the round table for showrunner, John Wells, and when Jason was on for the last one, they mentioned the sacrifices that they had to make, taking the shows from network to a cable situation. And it seems, you know, when that happened, I, I thought of the Mad Men situation, where there, you've got the network and the showrunner and the studio all fighting over how the show is going to get made and broadcast. And when they started talking about cutting actors on Mad Men to make the economics work, I said, what do these actors think when they're sitting there <laughs> reading this, that one of the options is to just cut some of the actors from the show? It's, it, it, to me, it, it seemed very disrespectful. And I was wondering what you guys, when you saw there, like, oh my God, what, what was going through your mind? Well, I was reading all that information along with the general public. I, I wasn't anymore in the loop or anything. So, uh, you know, a couple of people have already been cut out of the show, and that was very emotional for me. And, and um, so hearing that... Um, it's the, <laughs> it sounded like it could happen because it's happened before. So so it it scared me and and you know every single person is such a contributor and 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 I and every person on Mad Men has such a like people just love these characters. You know it just it just seems such a shame and it does feel disrespectful when you hear those things. But I also know they're trying to do their job and they're trying to save money and they're, they there's this whole power play thing that else settles in comfortably and, and it all works itself out, but there's a lot of scary words thrown around, I think, you know, e for everyone's show every year. You it's know? always the balance between art and commerce, you know, it's like, and it's sort of that whole lesson of you can't take it personal, because right. at a certain point, a television business. is designed to sell soap, that's what it's there for, yeah. and we are lucky enough to be able to Sounds artistically <laughs> help it out. But I think there does come, you know, it, it becomes a, it, there's all this money that it's a, it's business. So um, when I hear stuff like that, I, I'm sure it's, it's disrespectful, but I think it's also not to be taken personal because I don't think that's the intention of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's better really, off if you don't take it personal. Oh, you too. have to. You know, you You're have much to. Much better I mean, off if you don't hear what's being said in that room. Or too. Too. Somehow to it slips personal. out every once in a while. <laughs> yeah. Hard. I mean, it's not to say that it's not, but it's really, you know, it's, it's what we do. I mean, we have to also be business people, you yeah. know, which is kind of odd. But we're all strong yeah. enough and been doing this long enough now. We're not, we're not stupid, you know. That it's we, just we a shame because when actors become business people, we're thought of as difficult. Mm, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, and women. So when actors, women, yeah, yeah, more yeah. Women, yeah. Women, yeah. Women, yeah. A woman is a bitch. A man is a boss. Yeah. Right. Right. And when you know, actors are like, well, I've been doing this, this, and this, and now you have to pay me, blah, 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 blah. And suddenly you're asking for too much, right. and you're difficult. You know, and that's it's a very it, and when you remind them, crazy. Them, yeah. you remind crazy them, well, it's not personal. There, you know? It's yeah. not personal. That's right. Yeah. Regina, I was curious when. Southland transitioned from, I'll say transition, from NBC to TNT. I was curious how kind of shielded the talent was from all of that. Was, I, I remember I spoke to Anne Bitterman last year about that, and she described that day as the worst day of her life when she had to tell you guys that the show was leaving NBC. And I was curious how shielded were you during that transition and, and the, like sort of how in the loop you were as well when that was going on. None of us were in the loop. I mean. Wales wasn't in the loop either. <laughs> no, I mean, it just kind of happened, you know, it was a surprise. Um, 
Um, to be quite frank, I was pissed the hell off because I felt like, you know, here this network is telling us how great we are and how awesome we are, but, you know, they're dating another chick on the side. You know, that, that's, you know, what it felt like. Are you talking about a really big, so big, a really big. <laughs> so. I, um, I went out with that guy too. You went out with that guy too? <laughs> Man, isn't he something else? So did I. <laughs> But now we get the last laugh because he wears the comb over. He's yeah. trying to hang on. And um, we're with the young hotter cat. But uh, I, I, <laughs> um, I, I always felt that, the, that that wasn't the end of the show. Because just like how you were talking about just everything, all, all the different, I think you were saying all the different people that bring something mm -hmm. to it, so many people beyond just the actors, put so much into making this show the style that it is and that it was, that I just, there is no way that this much energy collectively has gone into something and it's not going to continue. And when um, John called me to tell me, I was like, this is not it. We were staying on. He was like, keep that, keep that energy, <laughs> Regina. Keep that energy. And I was like, I am telling you, this show will continue. It will, I don't know where it's going to be, but it will continue. So I always kind of, you know, had that feeling that it wasn't going to end. Now when we were waiting for the pickup from TNT for the third season, yeah, I felt like they took a little longer than I needed them to take to tell us we were coming back. But most of it is because I love doing this show. I love, I mean, it is sometimes five o'clock in the morning is a bitch, but I love going to work every day and everyone that I'm working with and seeing them enjoying what they're doing and just sharing that with, I, I just feel like the universe pays, pays it off. It, it just keeps going around, so. Were you that confident, Connie, about Friday Night Lights future? Oh gosh, confident <laughs> is not even I feel remotely like it's the correct word, but, um, but you know, there was something, and I think very similar to what you're talking about. We we just loved our show so much, and and uh, you know, and we were down in Austin, so to some degree, we felt a little removed from all of that stuff, mm -hmm. all of that business aspect of it, and and we just we were always on the bubble, and it was we just kind of kept thinking that we were the little engine that could or something, and and in the way that you are, we had no reason to believe that we would ever come back each year or that we would get, you know, be able to be ultimately saved by the NBC Direct TV, you know, mm -hmm. joining of our show and all that. But somehow we thought something would work out, you know, and so we we it just it's that same thing where, you know, when all those pieces come together, you just have to believe that it's gonna it's gonna work out somehow as it should. And you know we had to we got five seasons out of it, and that was pretty good for the little show that could. <laughs> <laughs> and do you feel like uh, collectively that you were speaking of the craft that you're more able to practice your craft in television than you are in film, and actually enjoy and get feel totally immersed in it compared to the movie roles you've had? I can actually speak well since I played the role that I play on our TV show, also in the movie Friday Night Lights. That's always sort of an interesting one because I think um, it's a great example on Friday Night Lights, the movie, my role was small to begin small. with, um, and then by the time it made it up on screen, it was almost non-existent, <laughs> you know, and it was really cut to smithereens, and I think um, in film, it's, it's much more difficult to find really fully, well, fully wrought female roles, and and so specifically when Peter Berg decided to make Friday Night Lights into a TV show, he really, he almost, he, he almost felt like he owed it to me, like he wanted to have us do this so that we could give that woman life that we weren't able to give her in, in the film. And, um, and I was scared to death. I was like, no way. I said no so many times because I, I didn't see how they were going to do that. But you know he was he was very committed to doing that and i think that having um the breadth of of time and and character and community that you have in a tv show really helps that at least in my experience how about other people well, with treme we have a, a 
front page and every script in a blood oath that we've sworn, sworn in secrecy to not reveal the content of the scripts. And um, with our show, there is an absolute tale that begins with the first episode of season one, and if God is willing, take us through however many years that, that may be. And so um, I had had the experience somewhat playing Kay Howard for five years, but there, there wasn't such a continuing story as Treme really, really truly is. Each, each year now when we're coming back, it's another year beyond uh, Katrina and all that disaster. And the not knowingness of it makes this really wonderful game. A lot of what's fun in work is not the easy part, but the obstacles, right? And um, so that thing of you could go, well, where is she going? And what's she going to do? What's going to happen next week? And like the audience, we hope, does with the character. Uh, but rather, if I have questions or I don't really understand where she's intended to be coming from in a particular line or something, I'll go have a conversation about where she has come from. Because that we all know. And what we don't know, because it came before the show, we can make up. Um, and that thing of, of living in tandem with somebody as their scenario grows and changes, as you grow and change, it's an extraordinary kind of thing where with a film, you, you have a beginning, a middle, and end before you begin. And you can, can sculpt her into that. And what happens before and after then has a, a, a different relation to, to the arc that you're trying to capture in the film. Yeah, I really like it. I know for my character, I have, um, a huge backstory that I know that I know and and studied and learned way before we started shooting, and it's fascinating to me because throughout however long we go, I'm able to bring that to each situation. You know, because that forms whatever situation you're in, where you've been, and um, and I love that because uh, it, week by week I don't really know what's going to happen, but I but all this comes with her. So it's really, <clears throat> you know, it's just like we are as a human being. You know, it's sort of like, you know, all of us comes with us. So um, I find that process really interesting. I, I, um, I know it's been, uh, I haven't done as much film work as I've done television, so that's kind of all I really know. And so I, uh, but I, I watch the, the people on our show that are basically film actors, and it was, it was difficult for them. Mm -hmm because not knowing where that beginning, middle, and end is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sort of they struggle with that, which I, but I find it very freeing. I you do know? too. I, really I always like ask not, them not to tell me. I don't, yeah. like, I don't want to know what's going to happen. Or, yeah. Because I have to do this every day, so I have to be in the moment. And if yes. I'm not in the moment, right. then it's not going to be truthful. Mm -hmm. So don't, I don't want to know. I don't know what's going to happen to me when I go home, right. if I'm going to get hit by a bus or you know, meet a stranger in an elevator. Or, you know, I don't know what my day is going to be, so why would I know what her day is going to be? We you all know what's you know. behind us. Yeah. Yes. Do not Which know is, but I remember on, on ER, I had worked, there wasn't much in the pilot of ER. I was on maybe seven minutes of screen time in a two-hour pilot, and I was supposed to die, and I didn't. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> yay! But I did all this research on nurses who commit suicide, and what, you know, and I went to my whole thing. No one needed to know. It was my own little story. And, and I was sort of following how they were make, making this character go, and I was like, oh, of course, she's an only child. So I started studying only children because I'm from three, so I didn't know how an only child would react. Four years down the line, oh, no. <laughs> I have a line that says, well, I shared a bathroom with seven sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and I, it threw awesome. me into such a tit. I was like, no, 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 I can't say that. <laughs> They're like, well, we need to bring new characters onto the show. I was like, no, that's the one thing. I, I had a wedding. Where were my sisters at my wedding the first year? Like, I went to this See, that's what the writers did think you're nuts, too. They just are like, they did. They gave me a right. It's the one thing I It's probably not even the same writers. It wasn't. They had left. All the writers had gone to your new shows, and the other writers were like, oh, really? Oh, okay. Well, we wanted to bring so and so on. All right, forget that story. There's just like all this craft I've been trying to put into this character that not telling anyone, but you know, it's your stuff, though. Share yeah. that. That brings up an interesting issue, though. How you guys resolve conflict with writers or with the showrunner? Oh, I just sleep with them. <laughs> <laughs> Works well. No, I'm kidding. Really, very much kidding. That's so much. Me too. <laughs> We all agree. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, good job. <laughs> Actually, it's just the opposite of my situation. People think because my husband is my boss at this time in my life that you, you have know, to sleep with him. Well, <laughs> <laughs> that, that would resolve things and make it easier. But it's, it's really, 
it's you know because you're I so, so we, tr- we try not to talk about it so much when we get home because yeah. it's really like can you imagine so you can 24 hours on working it. on it yeah. if oh, you don't yeah. like that's that's oh, trust me girl I have <laughs> I it from the first couple of seasons now we've worked it all out I uh, think it takes a very special kind of relationship it, it, it does nothing makes me happier in the morning like bye honey have a good day at work <laughs> I think it's healthy and good yeah I think doing that is an you have to really know each other well and and we do we and yeah work well we together. had to learn how to do it you know we really uh you know i just really respect him thank god so i trust him right you know i pretty much you know he has the final say right and i just have to keep my mouth shut. i know that i work on a show that the writers are the show that, that yes that's they really are how that's it, how the thing operates they produce it and 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 rightfully so and so basically i was getting a little consensus here in my job right now the writer wins Mm-hmm. I'll fight. Right. I'll fight tooth That's and right. nail for something that I feel is not <clears throat> jiving with what we've laid down already. But if they want it one other way, another way. If a director, because we get a different director, is guiding me in a direction and insisting on a reading that I just think is mm-hmm. ludicrous, I will then go to the writer producers on the set and I will say, don't let them right. ruin your script, please. Right. And they'll sort it out. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's a real sense of, uh, at least on our, our set, of respect for the writers. I mean, uh, I felt this when I did um, an arc on The Sopranos, too, where I really don't need to change an if, and, or a but. Whenever I mess up a line and the script supervisor will tell me what the right line is, I always say, oh, of course, yes. that's so much better. <laughs> right. And that's so rare to get that. Usually you're like, how do I make this work? Mm-hmm. How can I make, you know, mm-hmm. make this human? And I, I'm so grateful because it's half the battle. If you have good writing, oh. then all you have to worry about is the acting, you know? And that's Thank a God gift. Thank God for the script supervisor. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know my husband has said to me, um, the thing that uh, irritates him the most is when an actor will come to him and say, my character wouldn't say this. It drives me insane. You know, and he'll say, oh. well, you know what? Um, <clears throat> Yes, they would. Right. I wrote it. So, you know, it's basically that's the deal. It's yeah. the really, it's their vision. We're just sort of facilitating. Yeah. You know, I've so. never had an issue with my character. I've never thought that because I'm I'm telling their story. Right. right. So exactly. I'm just there to deliver it and tell the story. So I can't. I've never. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it, no, because this, this is being you. recorded. So <laughs> they don't need to know what I do. <laughs> We just we worked really well together, but it was a stra- it was an unusual scenario because we were in Austin and our writers were all in LA. Our oh, writers were not ours are too. Oh, oh. Ours are in LA. Yeah, and so we created this great. It was this great sense of trust, you know. And I would be on the phone with Jason Kadem like almost every week, you know, having a conversation about what they have. And but they also wrote knowing that we you know wanting us to kind of like take it and run with it and that was just the style of our show but what was beautiful about that is that it we were able to do that and then it actually worked which i think is is a rarity and particularly in television you know to be able to they they wrote these wonderful scripts in these wonderful characters and then they were like okay now go make it into that you know so it was a it felt like a true collaboration which is rare or unique and that's Well, and that speaks to the quality of the actor as well, that they would trust you to do that. I, I think, you know, that they would trust that situation to happen. Well... You guys are good. Yeah, really. well, I mean, I, I also think it's, it's, it's the quality of everybody down... You know, like, yeah. like what everybody was saying, starting from the top, it was just everybody was truly empowered to do their part in, the, in our show. And it was every single person. Writers, actors, grips, mm-hmm. lighting guys hair and makeup, you know, it's cool. Um, I think it's time for one last question. I wanted to ask all of you, um, how has choosing roles changed for you since you started? Or what you look for in a role, if that's like, for example, you, one of your first films is Train Spotting. Mm-hmm. Very different from what you're doing now. Mm-hmm. Um, I was just curious, what do you look for in a role and maybe how that's changed since you started? Well, I'm a bit of a nightmare uh, for my agent, I think, because I, I kind of don't want to work after eight months <laughs> doing the show. I'm kind of like, wait, what? When anybody tries to talk to me about other other projects, I kind of am like, no, I'm doing this now. I don't understand. Like, this is, like, I'm doing board walk, and I'm quite... You're committed to that. Committed to it. And then, you know, there might be a couple of things, like I'm doing an animation just now, a voice 
on an XR thing and, and that's quite fun because it doesn't take you too much out of, of, of boardwalk but um, it's, it's a big commitment, it's long hours, it's a long, like, long shoot and I'm delighted and so happy to be doing that and um, yeah, I don't know. How about you Christina? What's the first time in my career I've had, had choices, had options, it's, it's opened all sorts of doors and sort of changed all of our lives involved in the show and, and I, get to, I get to read really lovely scripts now and I get to audition for really great parts and um, I didn't have that before so it's, it's really changed my entire career and so I'm just like giddy and excited and um, did I answer that question? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> One thing, yeah. how important for you is it to do completely non-Joan <coughs> work? Meaning to you know, distance yourself, you have such an iconic character. Thank you, I, mm. I don't, um, I think Joan is a bunch of different things and, and I'm, I'm not particularly concerned about uh, typecasting uh, in particular. Before I played Joan, I oftentimes played the, the sort of quirky, goofy best friend, uh, sort of nerdy, um, so Really? So, yeah, always. <laughs> wow. And everyone would always say, you're not strong enough or tough enough, I can't imagine you playing this. And so Joan has opened up all these doors to characters that people always doubted that I could play before. Um, so it's been fantastic, because I can still play that the quirky, girl. The quirky nerdy goofball, because uh, that's who I am. So, I, so it's been helpful for me. Hmm. Regina? I, 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 I'm open to more options. I wish I had more options. Um, I wouldn't say that I'm looking for a specific type of role. I just know when I'm reading a script, if it moves me, if the woman seems real. Sometimes you, you get a script and it just this person, that, that is not even a real person. So I think that that's what I'm always looking for in whatever character, the truth. So that's... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, well, first, I like them to want me. <laughs> and then, um, you know, people, it's so funny to me because people always think that you get to a certain level in your career and then just, you know, there are loads, loads of options. <laughs> all the place. You know, uh, more times than not, you know, I'm, I, the phone's not ringing. ringing. And uh, mm -hmm. I think the biggest change for me was I had done um, comedy for so long. And I really, really was... Uh, loving that, but I wanted to just break out. And I'd been in this one situation. I was on Married with Children. People thought I was, I had big red hair and I walked around in high heels all the time. So it, it took a minute to get other kind of work and I had to really um, say no to certain kind of work at a certain point, which was awesomely weird for me. And, um, and so that I could let something else happen. And so, uh, you know, and I had to go in and really um, prove myself and knock down doors and show them. You know, when I was on Lost, it was like this long audition process for this kind of small arc, really. But it was just getting past that, you know, oh, you're a dramatic actress as well. So for me, it's kind of that. I just want to stay interested long enough to keep wanting to do it. And if I keep doing the same thing over and over again, that's not so interesting to me. So if there's any prerequisite, it would be that. But mostly it's, you know, I, I want to be wanted. <laughs> Speaking of wanted, Melissa, how has the Oscar changed what you're, the material you're seeing? I don't, I, I think it's a little too early to answer that. Because honestly, what I have seen, and there have been scripts that have come, but it is sort of the thing that, for the first time in my life, because I've just taken anything they've given me for 30 years. Um, no choosing. That one, yes, thank you. Um, and and so there 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 were there's been a you know growing over the last ten years really not just the Oscar um, you know a, a offering of but now there's a lot of things there that are you know but what I was thinking about in answer to the question is many years ago a very good close friend of mine noticed that the last couple of parts I had gotten I was probably maybe a twenty three-year-old actress at the time, the last couple of parts that were victims. Mm. And um, he just was noticing that. And I said, well, that doesn't sound like a very good idea. And I, that was all I did, was know in my mind that maybe it wouldn't be such a good idea to play too many more victims. And lo, other th things showed up. Mm. Um, and at this point, maybe 
the second only in all these years transition with that casting thing for me and waiting now and no um, I know that would help you out for me to come and play the mom to these bumblebee fuck teenage boys who don't know what direction to go in because their mother and never explain the mother's side of the story. I'm not going to be doing those for a little while. I won't say that time won't come when I need the work and I'll take it on. But if I have an opportunity now to be choosy, that is the one thing I'm wicked choosy about. I think there's been enough adolescent boy movies and probably adolescent girl movies. <laughs> Cheers. How about you, Julian? Uh, you know, right right now, anyway, if it's if it's not brilliant, I, I love the role I play, and I, I work 10 months out of the year, so the 10 weeks I have off, it's just not worth it to me. <laughs> I, you know, I, I it, there's been some interesting offers this year, because I said, well, if I do anything, it should be really opposite what I do, and I got offered a porn movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's different. <laughs> <laughs> they were listening to so you. They were listening to you. Wait, not an actual porn, you mean a movie no, about it is, No, right, it's not a porn, it's a porn movie. I mean, James Franco is doing it, and it's, and because he's doing it, it's attracting all these people, right. but I was like, ultimately, I'm, oh my God. I'm like a lesbian porn star going down on women, like, I can't, I have a child, like, you know what I mean, like, that's what's being offered to me, I think I'll just keep my I'd job. watch that. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that I was, was insulted by it, I was actually incredibly thrilled by it. And then you, you know, I, I just, Time is so precious, and I just, if it's not great, I haven't seen that many roles in film that even can put a light up to the f roles I see for women on television. And it's not to say I don't love films, I love them, but they don't seem to celebrate women the way that television does. So I think you have to be, when you're lucky enough like we are to have these roles on television, you have to be very careful what you choose in other venues because um, we're looked up to and respected as women in this business. So, And when you can, as you've talked about, guide how that character grows over the course yeah. of the series, that's, that's golden. Yeah, it's golden. a, yeah, I mean, and you know, usually it's independent movies that are the roles I, I get offered, which makes me happy because those are the ones that are the most interesting and the ones that don't pay, which is why you get offered them. Um, <laughs> but um, there haven't even been that many of those lately. Mm -hmm. There's less movies. There's yeah. less, less movies, it's shocking. We're so blessed. And Connie, how about you? Um, well, I, uh, it's, you know, Friday Night Lights is over, so it's sort of, I'm in this new position where I'm having to figure out what the next move is, and it's a hard one because, um, I loved playing that character, and I loved that show, and I loved that family that was that show, and um, so, it, and and I'm I'm also being really uh, having this new experience of having much more opportunity than I have before, which is amazing. But then it's like, okay, but where do you go with that? And it really does boil down to. Is, is this a real person? Is this a person that I can find a, a, an, in, an inroad to bring something to this character? Because as you're saying, you know, people really, I, I have this sense of responsibility after playing Tammy Taylor on Friday Night Lights because people who, lo who love the show and watch the show really got a lot out of that character and look up to the character and so it's like oh gosh I don't want to let anybody down you know? <laughs> the pressure it's real I know it's sort of the pressure and so therefore I'm gonna go off and play a porn star you I should it's a, I don't you know. should I I'm not woman enough to play that yeah. <laughs> all right on so that note perfect. yeah we will end <laughs> on that note. thank you very much that was awesome